It is going to be our final opening game. We still have quite a lot of gameplay left to go, but we have not seen what Life Coach and Zele have brought to the table here. Um, Life Coach is uh, one of the few players not bringing in Shaman, um, but I, I'm not surprised about that. I think he's not not even been bothered to play this like aggro Shaman. Aggro Shaman, as far as Life Coach is concerned, is a class the opponents play. Um, you know, he's he's. He's the one to play the warrior, the priest, the druid. Um, maybe there's some surprise that he didn't try handlock in this format. We have seen Life Coach participate in a lot of like weird format tournaments, and he seems to always try to make handlock work as well. So uh, I, I think with that, there's probably a decent amount of confidence in those classes. And uh, Zelia, of course, is running uh, a bit more of the standard uh, classes, and I would imagine the standard lists. Yeah, it makes sense that Life Coach has a very similar lineup to what Ardu and Tice have uh, with Priest, Warrior, and the Druid. I think that's actually the exact same three. Meaning that they also possibly could just be running the same 90 cards uh, across yeah. the board. Yeah. yeah. I know Life Coach is a big fan of Fierce Monkey as well. So uh, that is another case for why it's probably the same. Yeah, we talked about how whenever there's a tournament with like an alternate rule set and there's like money involved and there's like, you know, it, you can't prepare as much for this as you can for something else. And, you know, with, with regular play, just knowing your own deck, doing all that stuff, you know, that's, that's not really enough. You have to then see what your opponents are probably bringing. You have to put in like tech cards. There's a ton of work. That, that is involved in bringing, you know, the absolute best decks to any given tournament. And that challenge is, uh, you know, heightened to a ridiculous level uh, in this type of format that people really haven't practiced, they haven't played, they haven't played against, like, a, a mass audience. So even though uh, it, it seems like um, there's, a, there's a bit of similarities between team members, um, we can definitely see that as a strength. And, I mean, Tice did qualify with it, uh, I believe, Yep, Did he not uh, his first match. Yeah. Yeah. Fire, so, but, so don't mess with success. Winning formula. I mean, and, and it's scary because if they keep winning, it's like you know they're onto something. They went to the next level of ah oh, yeah, we know Druid and Shaman are very popular. Let's just mm -hmm. pull out these dragon decks and try to take advantage of it. Meanwhile, uh, Zelay is going to be bringing the Rogue as the third weapon of choice. And once again, Rogue, I, I actually want to see if Rogue's even more popular than Shaman. I don't think so, but it feels like yeah, it's so. a strong case for number three, right? Um, on the first day, every person except Dice brought Shaman. Uh, on the second day, uh, it looks like... RDU, Life Coach, and Kalento did not bring Shaman. So everyone at the tournament except all the G2 team players and Kalento brought Shaman. And for Rogue, it's slightly less than half the field. On the first day, it was it was Amnesiac, Strife, Crow, and Orange with Rogue. And uh, today, I believe it's four Rogue players. Yeah, it's just recency bias of uh, seeing Rogue a lot, so it makes you feel like you've seen it a, a ton. So not even close, but one thing that we have been seeing is variation among the Rogue decks. Zlay, um, you know, he really likes combo decks in general. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. Patron was a big thing, but even before Patron was popular uh, from Black Rock Mountain, Zlay made his first breakout performances in the ESL Legendary Series, uh, and he was playing the OTK Combo Warlock back then. Yeah. And brought that to the tournament. So That was actually just... a really fun deck. I played yeah. a lot of that. That was the, yeah. the Arcane Golem, Power of a Whelm, Power of a Whelm, Faceless deck. <laughs> Still kind of exists to this day uh, in a different form. Some people choose Rena Warlock setups. Some people just mm -hmm. choose normal setups. But you have Emperor Thorson as its main uh, engine generator. Uh, he was playing... That before Emperor Thorson came out. So uh, you can see Zelay is pretty committed to killing his opponents in a very fun and interactive way. <laughs> Wait a second. That doesn't sound very fun and interactive. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I I'm not sure if he also varied his Shaman or Druid lists. Um, I know Zelay also likes to just be pretty aggressive to stuff. Mm -hmm. So, But now that we're actually talking about this, um, like it feels like that deck would work pretty well in this tournament. I mean, that's basically Druid. Uh, you're looking for combo pieces, you're drawing more cards, and you have a variety of answers to stall the game. That's I, I'm actually surprised. I mean, now that we're starting to talk about some of these other decks, 
uh, it feels like uh, you know there's there's much more to it than uh, what we've seen the players bring so far. Well, maybe you lose too much in the exchange. Dark Bomb, for example, is gone. Yeah. Um, Implosion is a board mechanism. Uh, but you know what? Not not off the top of my head. I mean, I can, I can look it up uh, if we need more time. Because right now we're, we're just waiting for the players to get set up. Well, we do know that um, the the losers bracket was actually won by uh, Firebat. Firebat defeated Kalento three of two. Mm -hmm. And uh, these these matches are not streamed. The losers bracket uh, is is not streamed just for the uh, the effect uh, of time. But we will I, be I seeing a little bit more. Uh, not Hunter, but Agro Pally, I guess, will uh, will continue to be uh, present in the tournament. We'll see him back. We'll see him back. It, it's it, it'll be cool to see if uh, he can make a comeback with that really interesting lineup. Uh, you know, the biggest culprit and something that we could have easily looked, you know, forgotten. I we said it five hundred times was that with these kinds of stall decks with OTK, you really need things like Healbot mm -hmm. uh, in that Warlock deck, and you don't have Belcher. Uh, you also don't have Chows to stop the early game pressure. So. Mm -hmm. uh, you lose a lot of early game defense tools, so that's probably the biggest reason why you don't see hand lock from Life Coach or some of these combo locks, or even Rena Warlock to a, a large extent. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. There's there's a little bit of a void there, but the combo is still there. You you yeah. still have the the super unfair 24 damage combo or the 36 damage combo with an Emperor tick on every card. Oh, that's pretty fun when when it happens. Yeah, there's not many, like, one-to-one -one replacements with those cards either. It's like, you mm -hmm. play... Like, what's another one-mana defensive card? Gadge, uh, the Jouster? The Gadget and Jouster, is that what it's called? Yeah, or the Squire. Squire has been pretty, Squire. pretty popular. And then you have to play, like, Priestess of Elude for heal. It's like, that's just so bad. Like, Fen Creeper instead of Belcher. It's like, no! These are, like, the worst replacements. I mean, Fen Creeper wasn't too bad when there was a lot of five attacks, like, removal stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, it's just not ideal because you definitely want the, the the superior versions of it. Mm -hmm. Well, you you can do uh, Shadow Flame on. Um, let me see if I get this right. Eerie statue. Oh, they, I mean, Ancient Watch. I mean, what if you went back all the way to just like the old handlock days before? I mean, that 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 is certain possibility, but. Like there's there was such a big void that's left by the uh, anti he, anti Cubot as you mentioned, which is so funny because again it wasn't a very impressive card when everyone's like ah why do we need to heal for eight but like ah this body heals are all insane because there's so few and they're all suck. Yeah. Well, it, I don't know about the healing wave. Maybe that ended up being just like a bunch of hype and not too much because mm -hmm. it's because it's flashy. Heal fourteen. Where Raindad one time said to me, if it healed for 30, he still wouldn't consider playing it if it won the jet. Like, it, it has to heal 14 as a base, mm -hmm. and then, like, heal 30 if it uh, if it won the jet. So that was the conditions for Raindad playing that card. That's what he told me. Uh, it didn't turn out all that bad. I think the main weakness in Shaman is just uh, the inconsistency in the early game against a field of very consistent early game decks. And that's just the source of a lot of problems for some of, some of these more controlling decks that especially try to rely on heals. The reason heals work in Warlock is because Warlocks, like Warlocks have tools to clear the board constantly uh, and effectively without overloading their whole turn the next turn or anything like that. So, I mean, I think that's, that's the main issue. Heals by themselves are not good enough. You have to pair them with tools to start winning and coming back in the game. Yeah, which is interesting, right? Because they did get some tools, the Tunnel Trog, uh, Totem Golems, and mm -hmm. there's just a little bit more options every single expansion or, or adventure for early game stuff. And yet, uh, that means Shaman took that and decided to go face with it. So maybe maybe Super JJ is onto something that we don't know. But for now, I'm just going to lean to the camp that Zlay is playing in Aggro Shaman. Uh, looks like we're about to start pretty soon, just getting uh, Life Coach's cam un uh, set up here, which is probably the most important thing for the series, because li that's like 90% yeah. of the reason we love watching Life Coach play. 10% because sure. he makes these really awesome plays and decks, but the 90% is because of the reactions. They're, yeah. they're priceless. All right. Um, well, as far as the, uh, the tournament structure is going to go, um, we will have after this match the uh, the winners bracket matches 
Um, I believe that will mean we will see RDU versus Civis, and mm -hmm. that will be followed by Ostkaka versus uh, the winner here. And then we will go to the decider matches. So the loser of those two matches will face the winners of the loser's brackets. And Firebat has uh, qualified for that match by beating Colento in the off-stream uh, loser's bracket match. Yep, and ultimately they're playing for 30k. Uh, 12,500 for first place. So All right, here we go. Nice purse to be won. Druid versus Rogue. We see the Assassin's Blade. One thing that I actually haven't seen today at all is Big Game Hunter. We saw it in like quite a few of the decks yesterday, but like zero today. It seems that somehow a few of these tech choices have been quite polarized on uh, on the different uh, play sessions. Which works pretty conveniently for G2 because it seems that they put Ragnaros in their Druid decks across the board. Um, mm -hmm. So if they don't play big, if they expected people to stop playing Big Game Hunter because Doctor Room was around, then that gives them more reason to put another target that they feel is good, uh, but can't get Big Game Hunter. So that's a really interesting dynamic of going to the next level for G two. Living Roots here. While this card works so well for stopping the aggressive decks, it works quite poorly at doing anything against the combo rogue. Yeah, Rogue's Hero Power alone can deal with it for the uh, low price of 3 health, so... Uh, 5 health, I believe. Or oh, 6 is it five health? health. It's gonna... Well, he... The Rogue chose not to, uh... Coin, right? Yeah. There's gonna be 2 and then attack... Yeah, three, I guess you're right. You, it's 5 health. Yeah. I was talking about strictly in a vacuum, assuming he could attack it immediately, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh... In this scenario, he still has some options with the backstab SI, but things aren't very clean. Uh, I think there's there's a case to be had for the backstab SI. There's also a case to be had for the um, perhaps the deadly poison, and then backstab SI on the one ones next turn. Yeah, that that actually might not be too bad because it's more clean. Um, and you set up the weapon preemptively for inevitable uh, four mana play. So maybe you have an opportunity to kill off like a savage combatant and then um, not have to use the, the weapon charge. Uh, I, I think that's, that's pretty reasonable as well. You have a Tomb Pillager too to even get back the, the coin for inevitable use. He's definitely thinking it out. The options are very close. Mm hmm. We'll see. I mean, this is uh, this is not Life Coach's turn who's roping, it's his delay. And he's come up with some interesting choices. He's choosing to backstab SI, though. And that's okay, too, because it's also the most um, minion presence available, so that these living roots can't continue just to sneak in more and more damage. Well, they will continue to sneak more and more damage, because I believe we're going to see a Drew of the Claw here. Yeah, I mean, you can't always predict the Innervate Drew of the Claw, but it's something in the back of your mind that you're really afraid of. Mm -hmm. Do you? I mean, I just really don't feel like Druid misses the Shade of Naxxramas at all. I mean, some no. lists have flat out replaced it altogether in the normal meta game, but even here, that's like that and the Pilot Shredder are the two cards that are limited. Yeah, the, the Shade I think is just a non-issue, and the Savage Combatant in a few cases is better than the Shredder. So honestly, it really feels like we're seeing Druid, which. Hmm. I mean, arguably, but uh, somewhat. There's a there's a consensus on the, the typical mid range druid deck being like top two or top three decks in ladder right now. And then you know we see basically the full list here in a tournament where everyone else has to abide by the rules. So without much of a surprise, we see druid dominating and being played by nearly every player. Like we're taking some time to evaluate if you want to wild growth uh, versus take the tempo now. And against Rogue, I'm always in favor of taking the tempo, especially when they use the coin. So they have less ways to activate some kind of easy, convenient removal like Eviscerate. You can kill the Druid of the Claw. You just have to equip the Deadly Poison and take it. And I'd be okay with that. You end up trading two cards for two cards, mm. uh, yeah. giving, paving way for your Tomb Pillager. That's the best living roots ever. It is. It's done it's six gonna be like damage. an eighth damage or something by the end. Probably. 
What? It's just like it re. It's kind of like one mana deal eight or ten damage. That sounds so absurd on paper. But that's what's happening. Well, it's it's six guaranteed. Uh, we'll have to see if it goes beyond that. It, it feels guaranteed for eight because of the tomb pillager play. So then. Mm. Yeah, uh, there is that remote possibility, though, that some fan of knives get picked up, and that might be the choice instead. But when your opponent wild growths, you have that opportunity to to finally seize the board a little bit proactively, because wild growth doesn't do anything for immediate tempo. It just gives you yeah. more crystals in the future. And it's probably not going to be meaningful next turn either. Uh, probably the first turn that it will be meaningful is um, on seven mana. All right, so does Slay pick anything else that's going to discourage him from playing the Tomb Pillager? Oh, he uh, could shiv and eviscerate the one ones. Yeah, I mean, yeah, or attack and read dagger set up for <laughs> something else. But I, I think the Tomb Pillager just opens up much yeah, more possibilities. It's it's almost you know Thank somewhat you. answering wild growth to a certain extent. Um, oh wow. I, okay, I wasn't anticipating that attack, Crip. What do you think about that? Oh, he's sick of those 1-1s one uh, bullying him around. Yeah, so I guess he doesn't want it to do 10 damage. Uh, it's going to do 8. <laughs> and it really goes to show how getting on the board early is so ridiculously important in Hearthstone. Yeah, or even specifically for Druid, too, because um, Druid used to always pass turn 1, except for Innervate. Uh, or, or coin play, um, never really having one mana plays, and Living Roots has definitely overtaken Darnassus Aspirin as the most valuable card for that class. Uh, definitely not in the beginning, but nowadays when TGT is looked in the past, they look at Living Roots as being one of the best cards. It's so flexible. Mm -hmm. mm. There are a few plays here. While the trade looks pretty bad, it's it's usually a case where you'd want to eviscerate. If you trade, it makes your uh, your curve a little bit smoother. What about shiv eviscerate? Just for I feel like with yeah, I feel like if you just trade, play the violet teacher, and then either dagger or eviscerate with the coin, it's maybe a a little bit more threatening. Yeah, that's, that could also be a good point, too. Um, you keep spells also for Violet Teacher to like gain you tempo, but, I mean, you keep the 5-4 on board, and now you're starting to pressure a little bit. Ooh, Life Coach whiffs on any minions, all spells, so... Well, those 1-1s one -ones have dealt a lot of damage so far. Just need a little bit more. Yeah, I guess so. You have Savage Roar, so you can swipe, play Living Roots... Hero power, even or yeah, uh, I, I think you want to hold on to this wild growth. Sure, you go to nine mana the following turn, but you have no guarantee of savage or force of nature. Yeah, and these cards are so low value that uh, you probably will need that draw three turns from now. More so than a mana crystal, at least. What? To do? Right. Of course, life coach will uh, think about the next six turns in the game. Uh, while making this decision, though, so <laughs> wait a little bit here. I mean, it's kind of a, one of those things where uh, he just has a general rule sometimes of like, unless it is one card in your hand, you have ten mana, and it's like you're top decking, and you have to play it. You, you want to start your turn when the rope starts appearing because it just gives you more time to settle into your real estate and understand what you need to do. But it's very it's very linear from this point forward. Alright, well we have the Azure Drake. Yeah. We also have Teacher as available thing, because you can actually get value off the coin as a 1-1 one -one, and then mm -hmm. SI7 as well. Both both viable plays. Mm. Uh unfortunately just one mana short from like clearing the board, which I don't know how, how much you'd actually want to go in on clearing the board. Even if you had like eight mana, I don't think you want to use Flurry, for example. He is actually Attention dead to double class. Savage Roar. Uh, yeah, if he didn't do anything to those 1-1s, one -one, right? To ha, this guy's toast. It's pretty funny how that works. But Life Coach is still short. Needs a minion. Oh! oh. 
the worst. innervate wild growth does not work by the way it does work if wild growth costs zero mana after being emperored i believe wait There's what like, yeah if if wild growth costs i think one or zero mana you can innervate it out is that a bug yeah it seems weird enough that it probably is because that's inconsistent with wild, uh, innervating it now and wild growth thing because we've all yeah. been there we're like oh yeah i'll be really clever try to innervate so i can be like at 10 mana but it's 10 crystals mm -hmm. um what to hmm. do well i don't i don't really foresee a way for you to get out of this i think you just have to hope that you draw force of nature savage or the following turn for no one. and uh, you'll just be left top deck and the good news is that you have 27 health it's unlikely that rogue is going to kill you the next turn yeah but in two turns, you never know. I don't even think it's worth killing the 1-1, one, one, honestly. I think you just go face here. Yeah, because if they have Farseer, which is likely... Um, yeah, like you need, sometime you need those last few draws. points. Yeah, you, you need every single point of damage, because you have 15 from the hand. Azure Drake. Oh... That's interesting. That's a lot of damage to push out to the following turn. And the interesting thing is Zelly probably thinks he's dead. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> Combo again. Turn nine. God, this deck. And it's always that relief that you feel when it doesn't happen. But hey, it might happen. I mean, uh, there's probably in the order about 17 cards in Life Coach's deck. 19? 19. All right. Looking so, for two of them. Yeah, so we're looking at like uh, 10, 11 percent chance there. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Like, say, let's say he has two turns to do it because he's not going to die. Is he going to die? Uh, he's going to get 21. Yeah, oh, that, I, think, get... I think it's very likely that he's going to die next turn. Because oh, he, right. yeah. he takes 10 from that. He takes 11 from that blade. Yep, you're right. So this has to hit a minion. I also think you innervate a hero power. Yeah. Definitely innervate. I'm trying to think of any application of holding on to innervate, but you could be right. Well, you could hold on to innervate if you want to try to draw force of nature off the wild growth next turn. Okay. Choosing to do that. Oh, oh my god, the face! Ragnaros hitting face when you needed to kill a minion, killing wow. a minion when you needed to hit face. Oh man, and Life Coach has been stoic the entire time, and he is pretty frustrated, rubbing his hair, looking all dapper and composed the entire way through. But this is lethal, it's just yeah, yeah. I think he, I think he sees it. Yeah. That's good. Just triple checking, quadruple checking. It's very embarrassing because it costs all your mana. If you don't kill him, you have to trade a minion <laughs> with Ragnaros at the final second when you could have just sapped it. So. Life Coach Better would have stayed alive if he did uh, innervate Hero Power, though. But um, that would potentially make his next turn much worse. Yeah. And Life Coach can't believe it, but we certainly can because we've been seeing that play for a while. Uh, recognizing that if he didn't hero power with the innervate, that's what would happened. Mm -hmm. Hard to say, you know. Again, innervate in the late stages of the game does lose a lot of value, but it still has value nonetheless. So maybe Life Coach felt like he was better than just hero powering, and that one damage ended up mattering. I mean, even on stuff like Zelay attacking with the with his wicked knife, every single time he's able to do it, exacties. Yeah. All right. Well, next draw for the win. That's a big win for Zelay. Uh, I feel uh, he's he's got a win with the rogue. Um, I don't even think he was playing Miracle Rogue, so it probably wouldn't have fared the best against the priest. Uh, and now he's got what uh, are you know some of the best decks in the tournament: uh, Aggro Shaman and Mid Range Druid. Definitely, Aggro Shaman against the priest is still. I, I don't think it's changed much. Before, when Aggro Shaman was first catching on in popularity, people widely considered Aggro Shaman to be heavily favored against the priest because cards like Totem Golem and the the Tunnel Trog don't get answered very easily. But perhaps, you know, we did see Shadow Word Pain in Tice's list. That could be one of the key cards, along with things like Farseer, to fight early on for the board. 
Who knows? I might give the uh, early game board control to the priest to let them run away with the game. Mm. North Star is a huge factor, that's for sure. Just having anything turn one, especially when you're not running Chows anymore, feels like it's a big, pretty big deal. Is someone injured? All right. Well, that's the Nefarian we keep seeing, but I feel like almost every time we see it, it's in uh, a deck in the G2 team or possibly Kibler. <laughs> <laughs> Kibler does like Nefarian a lot. Yeah. Nefarian does, does seem to work. We see the elemental destruction in uh, Zelly's deck. We haven't seen that in every Shaman deck, mm -hmm. but the few times that we have, I think it's it's been a pretty good card. I've been pretty happy with what I've seen so far. Um, I think this turn, the North Shard just has to be dealt with. Otherwise, it's just going to start killing your minions pretty brutally. Yeah, makes sense. I, I, I'm not too opposed to using Rockbiter here. Your deck is not going to run out of damage to kill the priest. You know, you, even though you might feel like this Rockbiter has a lot of value later on. Northshire Cleric, though, especially if you anticipate Dragon Priest coming out of Life Coach, because you know G2's been bringing Dragon Priest, I would assume that that's the most important thing. I mean, Zelay's got a list that feels reminiscent of Amnesiac's list as well. I mean, the Elements of Destruction feels like a callback to it. But it uh, looks like he's running out of time. He's going to pass. Oh, he's roping. Well, the rope does mean that uh, next turn he'll have to act very quickly. Yeah, and, and we see his cam, so it doesn't seem like he disconnected this time around. Which would be unfortunate if we had to issue another game loss. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll see in a second. Uh, Life Coach, looks like he's not even thinking about the game right now. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everything is okay. I think I think it's okay right now. He's analyzing his play, but really, life coach has nothing to do. Think about where he wants to heal, if he wants to heal, how long he should wait. <laughs> Thinking about uh, you know what kind of hairstyles he wants to don next month, etc. Oh God. Well, he can heal the shaman if he wants. Yeah, it's possible. Little time. That would be. Poor sequencing. And Zelay. Okay, this is a little weird probably here. Probably disconnected. Hmm. Probably. Maybe so, he's uh, okay, so first I've of all, seen it, wait, mean, no, I've seen the strategy on ladder. This is what's going on. He's pretending like he disconnected. And then his opponent plays all the stuff as fast as possible without considering anything. And oh. then elemental destruction! I like it. I like it. The bamboozle play. <laughs> yes. It, it does actually work a bit. I've, I've seen it as a viable strategy against Patron Warrior. When you have, like, no chance against Patron Warrior, you just let them, like, curve out Patron on turn 5 while you pretend you're DC'd. And then you just kill it with a regular board clear and proceed to win the game. Yeah. Super advanced. <laughs> I've seen that zero times, but oh, I'm sorry, I've seen that zero times work. I've definitely seen people try it. Because um, the thing about it is that Zole gets less time every single turn that ropes out. Like as you keep roping, it gets more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, he's back in the game. I don't know. Uh, well, here's like a real big problem too, is that Priest actually had a reasonable early game with like Farseer and Technician and Dragons that actually can activate. Uh, and Shaman had like an okay-ish early game, so uh, it's, it's a pretty significant impact on Life Coach, who's still really taking his time thinking about it and... I mean, based off the way Zelay and Life Coach are proceeding, it might seem like we're just going to play this one out. Possibly. Which may lead us to seeing an elemental destruction like, you've, like you predicted. Which doesn't I even think, kill the board! I think you gotta wait another turn. If, if you're committed to faking a DC, you gotta stay, stay more committed. Pass another one. Oh, no! It's... Oh, he's, uh, got, he's got it, the Doom Hammer! Okay. 
Well, I mean, I don't want to call this one over because elemental destruction can do some really funny things. But it's pretty hard to come back from this spot. Actually, no, if you overcome this to the board... Yeah, could, he might there's... element the structure and clear it, and the 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 play is complete. Mm. <laughs> the sting operation has actually went through. <laughs> this would be the, one of the biggest coups in Hearthstone history. What's the worst that could happen here? Probably a uh, pyromancer and the heal. Maybe he doesn't play anything. He could play nothing, but I, I think that's unlikely. He's not actually threatening that much damage right now. Seven damage. Eh, yeah, it's not. It's not a two turn. Oh, yeah. He plays Blackwing Corruptor. He'll have twelve. His opponent will be at fourteen. So it's like kind of reasonable. Life coach, what are you gonna do? He's gonna pass. Oh wow. my. And Zelay picks up the combo, but he's not uh, of uh, being able to Lava Shock with the Elements of Destruction, but unfortunately it's the wrong order. He would have to Lava Shock first. Yeah. He only has three available to him right now. It's not going to work too well. I think you might as well just uh, hit up the Elemental Destruction and pass next turn, but I don't, I don't see how you'd ever win the game with that line of play. Yeah, you're overloaded for four. Five, giving you one mana the following turn. Um, he's a charger. It doesn't do anything. Doesn't get past. I think you just got elemental destruction and hope for the best. Little time. Maybe you. You can Rock Fighter and Lava Shock and then play Totem Golem. Clear the board of the 3-6 to 3-5 and then have the 3-4 to contest a 1-3. Or not. Or do nothing. I, oh, the follow-up Bamboozle. This is like, okay, Lyco just like, okay, he's DC'd again. You're, ne I think you're, you're never now. supposed to go. You're never <laughs> to go full Bamboozle. I, I want to see it, Crit, just one time. I think life coach is, is the wrong customer for this play. Oh yeah, you, you're pick. You have to pick your. You have to make sure you know your audience, right? When you're going to put yeah. on a show like this. Yeah. And life coach is uh, definitely not the the guy who like he he would think so hard about ways he can lose that he would definitely do like especially now that he has ten damage onto the face left and he has seven with the black wing corrupted. I think he'll definitely probably hold here. Like in the worst case scenario, that he loses his entire board, he doesn't want to be in an uh, awkward spot to not finish the game. I think he has enough cards to finish the game. I think he might as well play a black and group for here. I, wield the power. I like this play. Even knowing he has a mental destruction, I think this is a good play. So I. Oh, yeah, here we go! Yeah, oh, it is the next level plays! He got the five! Lava Shock and go. Let's, let's go, baby. You like the Lava Shock? Do you have to lava shock? You have too many cards. Don't worry, loves. The cavalry. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's gonna lava shock next turn because he has enough to do it. That's fine. Okay. Crip, it's happening. I'm telling you. All right. I think it's probably best to to leave the um the black wing uh, corruptor last. Do you think from the beginning this has been premeditated? Because, I mean, very quickly we saw Zelay's cam. Then he was not internet disconnected. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what I would do is Shadow Word Pain and then uh, Pyromancer afterwards into Farseer. Just to kind of disguise Lethal a little bit. Oh, yeah, I guess so. That Because you just need four damage onto the uh, yeah. onto the face with the Black Corruptor. Well, maybe you can consider... Um... Okay. Maybe, maybe he just wants to get in the most bored presence. Life Coach is being super cautious, because now he's like, okay, clearly he's 
he's definitely up to some shenanigans here. This would be one of the, the coolest next level plays from start to finish. If Zelay intentionally planned like, okay, I have Elemental Destruction, he had Northshire Cleric, I'm going to try to get mo as much mileage out of the Doomhammer as I can and conserve all my cards, make it think that I'm just not doing anything, uh, and, and try to really go for this super secret Mission Impossible thing, man. <laughs> oh my it god! It could happen. He, I mean, he has the clear here. He ha he maintains board board control. Um, Zelly could actually win this game. He's got how much damage does he have? He's got two ten with the Rock Biter Doom Hammer, uh, and then Lightning Bolt is fifteen. So he's still some change away. He's got Wolf Rider, so he's he's gonna have to definitely. He's gonna Wolf, yeah. He's gonna Wolf Rider, uh, use some Sergeant for sure here. And uh, then you can also Rock Biter if he wants to just hit for ten now. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, so it's mana efficiency. It's, this, this is not hitting any minions, right? The Doomhammer is always just gonna be going phase. Okay, hmm. takes it a little bit slow. He might you want to use Rock Biter on a minion to get passed up. That that's also a possibility. I see. Oh, that's a good card. You can just Brand heal. Bronze Beard. Yeah, heal yourself for six. Self. And then Shadow Word Pain. Yeah. Oh, no, Brand you Effect. Get, you get four spells from the Farian Trip. That is. Wow. That is doubling your chances to potentially draw into lethal against Shaman. Or, you know what I want to see? see Healing Wave. Because <laughs> <So laughs> <laughs> then we get like 28 heal if you got two Healing Waves or something. That'd be so funny. Because you can get multiple copies of spells from the Farian. Absolutely. I wonder. And then this game would be good. You know, the, the, it would be just completely meme-tastic. I would love it. Please, for the love of God, let it's the gonna, Deferian come it down. Is, it's going to be like quad um, totemic might. That's what it's called. Yep. Aww. I, I have a feeling Brand Bronze is going to die. No! Really? I have a sneaky suspicion that he won't. Really? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's too. I think it's too dangerous to let him live. But I mean, at this stage, you just really have to figure out. Wait, yeah. you know, most likely he's going to need a second Doom Hammer to win too. At at this rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lightning bolt, and then probably abusive surge to kill the brand. I was going to try to go for the lightning bolt again. No, I guess it's uh, abusive and totem golem then. Yeah, uh, Totem Golem is pretty reasonable damage onto the board as well, and it's resilient against a lot of what uh, the priest can do. Oh, maybe but... he's thinking about Doomhammer, because at five you're still pretty safe, and you can start to load up the board if he does Rock Biter and plays the, uh, the Totem Golem instead of sacrificing the Abyss of Surge. So, do you Nefarian or do you Shadow or Pain and take it slow? I think it depends on your next draw. Taking it slow and talking about it. Oh, def Nefarian, dude. Yeah, Nefarian, Nefarian for the Lava Burst finish? It has to be next turn, and maybe he's wondering if he can die. Wait. Oh, is, is I think he might be dead. Hold on. It's it's 10 plus the 7. He's actually dead. He's He has, so like has the exact five. lethal. He if has he 25 play, plays Nefarian! Yeah. If he plays oh Nefarian, God. he will Chris? lose unless he gets Ancestral Healing. Oh, you're right. He can taunt that. It's a zero mana. I was like, I thought you were ancestral yeah. healing. For some reason, I was I confused it with ancestral knowledge. It's a zero yep. mana, restore a minion to full health and give it taunt. Yep. It's a spell that he could play on Nefarian. He has to put Zelay exactly on these cards, though. If he's gonna take it very slow, he's gonna shadow her pain. Holy smite, he's, heal himself. He's gonna he's gonna Nefarian with like nothing left on the rope. Get ancestral healing and then rope out. No, he's doing the safe play. Okay. All right, so we, we, we don't get a life coach reaction gift just yet. But Zelay is still very much in this. Priest is down to one card. Yeah. And he's certainly going to kill off this Northshire Cleric so that Priest can't get any more cards. 
Oh, okay. We didn't count for overload, by the way. Um, it didn't need can't, to. That he was, can't, like, draw much. cards off the Finley and then, like, play a bunch of stuff. So he could have played his whole hand, but that was some really awesome planning from Zolai. He would have had exact mana, exact lethal if his opponent played, like, Ysera or he can He can double hero power with Finley. I think that's the play. I think the play is to get a totem, Finley, and try to get a hero power that interacts with the board. Or even just damage. That wouldn't be bad either. Hunter. Well, uh, Hunter hero power is pretty good. Shapeshift is convenient for allowing you to kill the cleric, but that's mm -hmm. about it. Um, and it's only good with the doom hammer. Hunter is <laughs> just the power of the rock fighter. I think I'm I'm in the oh dude. Well, you find out the priest. Oh man, this, again, this is so cool. I, I'm loving it the more I see it. All right, Nefarian, let's see it. Oh wow, that's pretty good. But uh, Nefarian could have gotten like a lightning bolt that may have been preferable to play. Let's see it. Two spells. Totem it twice. <laughs> Completely worthless. Oh whoa, the ancestral knowledge you can actually gain lethal here. Yeah, like Nineteen rock damage. Bite. Rock biter would be it. Oh, it is it. That's it! He has done. to be it. It's 16, 16 plus 4 plus 5. Do it though. Yeah, that's lethal. Oh God, I can't believe it! Crip, Christopher Nolan should use this game <laughs> at the next movie. And I would watch the crap out of it. I'd pay real money for the first time in a long time to watch that film in IMAX 3D. Oh my God. Ship it! <laughs> Life coach can't believe it! How has this happened to him so many times? <laughs> I mean, see, no, 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 no. It's just, it's just part of the new way you play Shaman. The way you play Shaman is actually by not playing anything as an aggro Shaman for the first five turns. And then you just win the game. That's, that's how you play the deck. Zelly just knows what he's doing. Chat's gonna feel really stupid in about ten minutes. <laughs> in about ten minutes, this is, that was awesome. I don't care any, what anyone says. That game was was great. I'm gonna remember that one uh, for a long time. See, the strategy works. You get your the opponent to overcommit a little bit. <laughs> Must be preserved. Oh right. my god. Uh, and here, here's the really funny thing. Did Life Coach play that perfectly? I mean, he did overextend to the board one turn, right? Again, I. I I don't feel that was a misplay. Um, I feel that's just what you do. Um, I mean, we, we saw the elemental destruction. Uh, surely Life Coach is playing around it as he was the previous turn. You just don't think you could actually lose. Like, even if he has an ele elemental destruction, his life total is just so low that it shouldn't have mattered. But somehow it did. Man. It's going to be a druid here. I, I, you, know, you know what's going to be the worst? Part about this for Zelay is that he has to like contain his excitement for just what happened. <laughs> uh, for them to like realize he's up 2 0 uh, instead of tied 1 1 potentially, and then just like have to settle down and focus um, and not spoil it, man, because that, that was such a cool game. Life Coach, meanwhile, he's just going to rebound immediately back, play this Druid. Uh, he's got the Wild Growth and the Innervate. But, uh, you know, his opponent also has the wild growth, so this game isn't, is, is far from guaranteed. I don't believe his living roots are going to do uh, 10 damage in this game, though. Hmm. Oh, well, now, now the could debate. What do you, you actually do? Coin the wild growth and interval the true of the claw. Mm hmm. Yeah, I guess because uh, you just want to get that guaranteed crystal, hit that strong minion. Farseer can get easily wrecked. Two wild growths. The second one is something to do. At least he's not passing on turn turn three. Yeah. Innervate Drew the Claw. Yeah, you have to do the Drew the Claw. It's so good with the follow up on the Farseer that heals the damage that it takes from trading into something. Because realistically, there's there's going to be very few answers that uh, the opposing Druid player would have to do an additional four damage. It's going to come from like Savage Roar, a Swipe, or a Full Turn Wrath. That's about it. Um, 
most often you choose to just play a minion instead. This, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really like playing super slow with the Innervate with Farseer and then, like, keeping it for Ancient of Lore. I think, like you said, um, you know that the best four mana minions that your opponent runs are the Savage Combatant, and that gives you ability to wrath it down. Mm -hmm. So, I, I like that a lot. And, you know, Soleil's in kind of an awkward spot here. The Keeper of the Grove doesn't have a high impact at all. Drew the Claws, eat those things three times over. Well, Delay's thinking about it, which means that uh, he might do the uh, the two damage with the keeper play, which is going to get hmm. completely wrecked. Hmm. I must save so, I guess you just pass, right? Oh, he's going to trade it in. Yeah, like you said, just cashing it in. And that gives an opportunity for Farseer to have some really big yep. impact. My god. Huge. Big time value. He might be thinking about uh, Wrath and Hero Power and to Farseer the next turn, but I don't really like that too much. I think I think it's probably better to just have more minions on the board for the potential of you needing Savage Roar. Yeah, it makes sense as well. Um... I don't know. I, I I think this play is pretty straightforward as well. I, th I think maybe he's thinking about mana efficiency, but I like Wrath cycling this matchup. I don't really want to use it for three damage unless it's just like a huge tempo swing of killing off something that mm -hmm. uh, you you really need to snipe behind like a taunt. I feel like Farseer is so good in this deck. It might just be better than Shade. <laughs> I, it used to be it used to be a card that people would include in some druid decks, even when combo was first starting to become popular. Mm -hmm. uh, it just be, it just felt like shade was more of what druid wanted to do uh, in terms of the early game ramps. And honestly, it's just kind of like a stylistic thing too, because you feel like Farseer is just better against the aggro stuff, but in the late stage of the game. Um, Farseer even still has application too. Shade sometimes late stage of the game is just like a three three anyways, right? Yeah. Or well, or yes. air key for a combo to hit. Yes, Pirate's a very good draw here. It propels him to seven mana and puts something on the board. And seven mana is gonna allow him to ancient of lore unless something happens to uh, his uh, aspirant. And it doesn't seem like something will happen to it. It's gonna be an Azure Drake, and he's gonna have to draw a Wrath or a. Uh, Oh, that card. Oh, not bad. Sniping it so that he denies a seven mana play. That's very, huge. very good. Yeah, it is a very big deal. Uh, not not the biggest end of the end of the world though, because you still have some plays. Uh, or, or do you? What happened? Oh, life coach is catching up on his POV. Okay. Yeah. So you have. I think you want to cycle, right? Maybe you feel comfortable with just the one ones though, because you have Savage Roar. Because mm. if you Wrath for three, Hero Power down the Azure Drake, and then play the one ones, you might reasonably have some good pressure onto the board. As opposed to like Wrathing for one, not picking up anything, and then having to like Living Roots it. Yeah, I like the Wrath for three. Wrath for three, set up a bigger board, you saturate five mana, you have the option of Savage Roar or. Uh... Ancient of Lore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, one of those things where you have to think, is there enough tempo to game to rathing, for Wrathing for 3? And that ends up being the case here. So, with Living Roots and the Forest here, that is 13 damage represented with a Savage Roar uh, 21 with a second Savage Roar. Still not enough. So I feel like uh, Zelay is still in pretty good, pretty good spot here. Yep. And the Druid Claws is a pretty decent play here. Um, usually with Taunts, you want to play them after another minion has taken some damage, but that's just not going to fly here because the uh, um, the Harrison is just too weak. Yeah, Harrison is vulnerable to the four attack on board, which will most likely stay, and then Force of Nature is not really even a, a question here. Too inefficient, um, and the board's not threatening enough to warrant it. Taking his time, though. But it uh, definitely seems like the Druid of the Claw is going to come down. 
Ancient of Lore, pretty huge though. Uh, still has an opportunity to refill the hand, so then it becomes a threat of whatever, uh, whatever he draws to potentially end the game. He just needs this, uh, the force of nature, and then from that point on, fight for the board position. I think there's a good chance that if Zilli blanks out, he's going to, uh, wow. He's going to play his own force of nature to try to start clearing this board. Mm. Gotcha. Force of nature to kill the 5-5 five five and then mounted Raptor, I guess. It is a bit weak, though. It is weak, and it there's still no like clear end in sight of how you win the game because you have yeah. to have your board hit three more times. Hmm. Uh and that's very optimistic to say the least so that belongs in yeah maybe he just loads up the board here says all right i'll just try to see if i can draw a savage roar and this mm -hmm. well with oh wow with two savage roars um he has a life which has a lot of damage here himself but i think it's probably best to just uh taunt up Five, eight, nine plus sixteen is twenty-five, but your opponent's at twenty-nine effective health, so you're definitely off. Ancient of War, pretty it's, strong. Drew the Claw, it's a little bit more so, than that because it's yeah. it doesn't really match up very well. I think the Drew of the Claw Savage Roar might actually be more damage because it matches up better. Uh, it would be right. eight plus nine; it'd be seventeen face. You'd put him at six. You can also just draw the claw and then play Farseer, like hit and bump into the four six. Uh, yeah, six damage and Farseer. That's a really good value play. I like that a lot. Draw the claw taunt. Five five and one one into the opponent's draw the claw and Farseer mm -hmm. again, saving the day. I wonder if uh, Zelay has a mind control tech, a pocket MCT to swing the board here. That's pretty good. Not bad. Is that enough? No, it's not enough. But it's it's close. Um, he can lose exactly six, so it's exact damage here on on the taunt HP pool. So it's a fourteen plus the eight plus the what? two against twenty eight. Um, no, that's four short then. Four short. But that probably will mean that there might be a, a board clear happening here. Yeah, I he he has to because there's too much threat of what your opponent can do. He's coming up on nine mana, hmm. and if he keeps like any reasonable size minion to stick, he could put you in a really awkward spot health wise. And the quality of your minions isn't too bad if you end up combo clearing. Oh, yeah, I think it's pretty reasonable. Okay, it's gonna take a little so, bit of damage just yes. to put out the most damage possible. I think with no cards, this is absolutely the play to make. Even kills off the uh, the Farseer for just to be super safe. And look, that would have been the game. Wow. Uh, but Ancient of War now is going to absolutely dominate this board. Yeah, now Ancient of War is going to have to be cleared in order for Zelia to stay into this. And that that's going to be difficult to do. That's going to be really difficult to do. Uh, if he picks up Keeper of the Grove, though, no, no. That's it. the I case think it's best. against the Darnassus Aspirant has just I been closed. <laughs> I think his best bet was probably an Ancient of War into a Savage Roar, and then just Savage Roar the uh, Ancient of War down. Yeah, sure, but that's gonna wrap it up. Life Coach climbs back into the series, uh, two to one, getting an important win with the Druid, but still has to win with the Priest and the Warrior. Uh, He's got to do that against Zelly's Druid, which is a really big factor. Druid has been uh, the deck of the tournament. It's crushed almost every single warrior it's played against. Maybe actually it's crushed every warrior it's played against. I'm not too sure in what circumstance the warriors have won games so far, but they haven't done very. They have not done very well. Um, mm -hmm. Against Priest, though, it could happen. I feel like Priest is not bad against Druid just because it has such big threats. Um, they're kind of playing the same game, and if the priest gets uh, a little bit ahead, uh, it can just pad its HP with its hero power constantly. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a possibility, and we've seen it actually happen in, in different degrees over the past uh, couple of days here. 
Uh, but we're, we're coming down to the wire here. Uh, needs to turn it around once again. Life Coach is on a must-win situation. Druid's been starting with Wild Growth uh, or Living Roots or Ramp pretty e pretty often. Uh, the, the decks gain a ton of consistency, and uh, for good reason. It just needs that early game consistency. Otherwise, it falls really far behind. Hmm. So it's with the opening hand, hand yeah. Uh, we, I, I would consider keeping Shadow of Pain because you know your opponent's running Aspirants. Um, would you would you keep any of these three drops because you really want something proactive early on, like maybe turns one and two? I kind of like the Shadow of Pain. You know he's running Aspirants. You know you have to deal with it somehow. Like now you kind of get crushed by an Aspirant. Job's mm. done. Yeah, well, assuming your opponent has it, in this case, Life Coach doesn't have the Aspirant, but he's got turn 2 Wild Growth into turn 3 Coin 5 Drop, turn 4 5 Drop, so that sounds pretty reasonable, and uh, always that awkward moment, no Dragon, Wormrest Agent becomes much weaker, and you can't even redeem it with a Valence Chosen because it doesn't exist in this format. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Pretty big weakness. I mean, wow. one attack just doesn't really do anything against druid minions. It challenges the, the living roots. That's about it. Well, it's going to become a uh, druid of the claw food here pretty soon, I believe. Oh, well, there's the dragon. Just a turn too late, but it's okay. Now there's a reasonable amount of power on the board, and uh, yeah, and that life coach. It has the board for now, which is the most important thing as the uh, as the priest player that you're always looking for. Mm. What is it going to be though? It's probably going to be the Drew of the Claw and Taunt with the coin. Yeah. Again, and you're not really afraid of Valence Chosen, right? Right. The Farseer is actually the superhero yet again, though. Mm -hmm. Look at that. The, the Farseer can heal the 3-5 out of range of any bad stuff, and now with the North Shard draw, he can draw an extra and card off card. it. And now that he, that North Shard is probably the biggest threat, there's some chance that the Druid of the Claw might attack it. He might even get a good Holy Nova the following turn. Ooh, I like that. You know, the, the Holy Nova follow-up with 7 power on board almost guarantees you to kill anything, uh, even that your opponent can innervate. Mm-hmm. You know, a couple of other tools that you know Dragon Priest lost that we haven't mentioned. Uh, Shrinkmeister, for example, uh, that's a card yeah. that people we're looking for, um, especially in combination with cards like Shadow Word Pain. It's it's against classes like Druid, which Shrinkmeister is super good against because you can grab tempo really fast. Uh, but I like this play that you suggested. It's it's a very good line because it just gives you so much insurance and it gives you pretty strong turn five. Where generally Holy Nova is not very good against the, the Druid. Ooh, the Drake. Um, so you have to you have to Drake, I guess. Can you consider an innervate force of nature? Not really. Um, innervate so force. I think you give up too much by doing that. Yeah. Maybe maybe Drake innervate wrath and then control the state of the board a little bit. I like the Drake innervate wrath. Um, you you definitely want to kill that North Shire. Uh, you can Wrath a 3-4, and uh, your board is not challenged. Like, you, you're ahead on the board. So, generally, you're happy when that happens. The Holy Nova isn't even going to be that great. Uh, we probably won't even see it, uh, I think. Right, we might better. see Holy Smite or Power Shield plays. Yeah. All right. So we're still looking for a dragon. Uh, a dragon pickup could be pretty convenient here. And he can get two draws at it if he wishes. Oh, he gets one anyway. Yeah, so this is this is a very easy uh, Holy Smite Twilight Guardian, I believe. Yeah, it's a it's a board clear, and you you know you're starting to put out some. You, you have a three six, which is pretty imposing, given that uh, whatever Druid puts out is usually five mm. five or worse. I'm not even sure he will trade, because even playing around a swipe, well, swipe has a spell damage and it can kill 
the uh, the three six dragon. Uh, he can't deal with the other two minions, which then trade for the Drake. So, in the worst case of your opponent having a swipe, you're still ahead on the board because you play on an, into an empty board on turn six. So, I actually don't don't think you need to kill the Drake. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I like that when you analyze it like that. It's not really too much of a threat. They used Wrath already as well. And you keep a reasonable healthy board. Wormrest Agent still being useless as usual, but the convenient thing is because it doesn't have Taunt, it won't uh, it won't die to like the Azure Drake. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, over in Zalay's camp, still in... Pretty awkward situation here. Yeah, you you're gonna probably want to get the combo as fast as possible, but I don't know how this is gonna fly. Hmm. So you can wild growth, aspirant, and then living roots to kill off the mm. earthy frost. Here. That seems pretty weak because the two three is extremely vulnerable to the. Uh, the Twilight Guardian, which most likely uh, won't do anything. But then, you know, we also know there's a Holy Nova backup. So the Holy Nova is going to wreck the board really hard. Mm, yeah. The alternative is to use some of his spells for clearing. And there's no there's no clear. You can only come out even. I think every play, you can't actually beat the board. So I think because of that, you just play everything out, hope for the best, and then try to combo next turn. If you can, um, but he doesn't even play the Aspirin just because uh, he's really afraid of what can happen and uh, ends up being the right call. Two Holy Novas in the deck. I wonder if that's one of the differences uh, because I know Holy Novas are always controversial in, in uh, priest lists. Sometimes they feel like it's not good to run it, but you don't have as much AoE access, so perhaps yeah. because in this format you don't have Light Bomb and other things like that, you run two Holy Novas. Yeah, without Light Bomb, it's, it's a bit of an issue. Here, Holy Nova kind of sucks, but if you don't play Holy Nova, you're still not playing much else. Um, I think it's probably worth it to Holy Nova just because it's such a weak card otherwise. Yeah, if you attack, if you kill the Drake, well, you can also kill the Drake and then play one of the Twilight Whelps. Yeah. Slightly improve your board damage, and then the Twilight Garden's still at a reasonable 3 5. Uh, if, if, if he's planning on killing, he should probably tap yeah. into it first, unless he's not going to trade and just going to go face. Oh, okay. Face is the place. <laughs> Even the priest, he's <laughs> learned his ways. All right, well, it looks like it's going to work for now. Um, Zelly again, struggling to get any big threats on the board. Uh, this Twilight Guardian is just doing a really good job of stopping uh, any great plays he might try to play. Like, you, you can't force nature now, you can't Savage Roar now. You just got to play your small minions and hope for the best yet again. Um, Zaley just has like he has like no control over this game. He's just playing life coaches, life coaches game. Hmm, yeah, life coaches just because he has the the board, and the moment you can strip the board away from the priest, then I mean, imagine if there's just like a one four. There's really nothing else priest can do with just these weak minions. So Zalei has to figure out, if possible, another way for him to get past it without having to commit something like Savage Roar. Because Savage Roar right now is his only way to get past this miniature, uh, like this miniature big taunt here. Yeah. Well, that's a really good Holy Nova yet again. Um, there is some, there is some decision making here. Uh, so the one four hitting the two three before the nova is, a, is always a good idea, but you can Not also hit the three two before the holy nova. There are there's so few one drops that survive the the two damage from the nova, and uh, I think on average it's the best way to clear. But at the same time, we've seen that life coach is really interested in doing as much face damage as possible. So I I, I would think he uh, he's going to continue his strategy. Yeah, plus he might take less damage on the Drake this way because he can heal up afterwards. 
So we'll see what comes out. Usually the worst case is Cavaldir Raider. Uh, oops, I'm, I'm making the same mistake now. The injured Cavaldir. <laughs> That's actually a pretty bad case. If um, if he gets like a flip spare part, it could uh, severely impact the value from the, the Twilight Guardian. Yeah, the reversing switch, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a silence. Goodness. Not bad. Not bad, but man, that priest is at thirty. <laughs> A really long way for the druid to to win this game. The main weakness that I've seen so far from Zelay's uh, games here is that he's just not drawing the Ancient of Lore. He's never at a card advantage, and it's just um, he has to to really like milk everything for as much value as possible. That's so hard to do. Well, his hope is that Priest is just holding situational response and reactive cards. And, uh, you know, from there, he can start climbing back with actual minions. But, I mean, we know Life Coach still has yet to hit some of his biggest minions. He only has eight mana, so he can't play a nine a niner yet, but he still has a Twilight Guardian. Or that. That's pretty good. Blackwing Corruptor is great. Definitely want to play that so you can get the benefit of his battle cry. And keep chugging along. Right now, you, you might even draw into lethal if you pick up another Blackwing Corruptor. Let's see if Zayla gets anything. He does. Wow. Big time draw. That is a huge draw. We have to wonder how we're going to make use of this tax spare part, though. Um, like, you I, have to assume I that, know, really. that there might be an, an entomb here. I'm thinking the, the attack spare part might be decent to play around another power word shield, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Or... um. It depends on like if he has any other attack minions he wants to get out of Shadowward Pain range. Well, let's see. I mean, there's not too much to evaluate. I think you have to play the Ancient of War for the best opportunity to climb back onto the board. Yeah. Uh, and there's no real debate. You have to play it. Rooted, unfortunately. Love to see him uproot one day, but this is not that time. All right, he goes for the spare part. Just um, highest, highest risk. That's what you gotta do when you're behind like this. Yep. He's obviously looking for an Little entomb beat. here. Mm, Farseer no isn't anything special here. No, it's completely worthless. Well, it does load up enough power to challenge the Ancient of War's health. So, because right now you have seven, and the three would add to it. Would you even play the Twilight Guardian? Is the taunt meaningful? Hmm. And the plus attack, kind of. Mm. But the the six it's attack. Really, really thing it's is really something neat. to um, to assess based on what you know is in your deck. Which life coach would have a much better idea than we do. Um, he has to calculate how many dragons are in the deck, chance of drawing one, uh, chance of uh, actually being able to play it with a drawn dragon. Because uh, even if you get a dragon, like let's say you get like Nefarian, then you have to play Nefarian. You can't play the, the Twilight Guardian first. You can't do that, right? So some of the yeah. dragons don't even work. It's actually very complicated. Okay, so you see 10 power on the board, and he can't deal with it. Uh, do you want to play Keeper, so that way you can eliminate a, th uh, a minion off the board and keep your Ancient of War chugging? I think or you would have you want to, to just load up the board and then play everything. I, I think you have to play the keeper. Your ancient of war is um, is basically everything you got right now. You got to protect that. Uh, the real question is: Do you want to start initiating trades against the priest that obviously has no answer for your ancient of war, or do you want to start um, going through them. and pushing for some Any damage? Face? Mm -hmm. I go. I think we go face. Priest doesn't have many buffs, which are super significant. You said power with shield being one of them, but that's probably the only one these days outside of the self battle cry buffs. So I like hitting face. The oh, fairy in there it is. Wait, wait, wait. We we're, let's see it naturalize right now. Wow, that would be lethal. To redeem the previous Nefarian draws. No, but those are really good cards, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Still good damage. That's seven damage. Or how much does Mark of Nature give as a plus attack? Is it plus four, four or plus three? Plus four. four. So that's eight. Eight burst if you have a minion. Can you actually stay alive here? Mm, well, you yeah, can... you could. You had you'd have to kill the uh, the five four with the Ancient of War. Hmm, I wonder. 
Okay, and then, or 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 the Nefarian. You can kill the Nefarian yeah. with, with the roots. I was thinking about killing Nefarian and then killing the two three and then playing Harrison. Um, because Priest still has to get through it, but that ends up killing you because the bite helps you get through the Ancient of War and then oh. Nature gets right. the bite. So if he goes for this, I mean, how can you play? Four. How do you play around these things? Like, Druid has so many spells like Healing Touch and Innervate. Like, if you got Innervates, they're just, they're just as useless as anything else, right? Nah, he's... I mean, Zale, obviously, Zale, like, can't be bothered to play around all these ridiculous cards. Uh, he's just loading the board, hoping for a top deck Savage Roar. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's not happening. Uh, it looks like Life Coach is going to have this one, uh, pending some disastrous play here, but I, I don't imagine he's been playing perfectly so far. Yep, and the Bite and Mark of Nature damage is just more than enough. He had 21 damage this turn. And some change, so what, what a really fun series back and forth with some crazy stuff. And we're going to go to Dragon Warrior versus Midrange Druid to see if we can once again validate the opinion of G2 and, and a few other players who brought Dragon Warrior. Uh, it hasn't had the most success but it's definitely one of the more interesting decks brought to this event. Mm -hmm. It is. It is the version that is probably the version that Tice was playing. Tice is playing again those uh, those Earthen Ring Far Seers everywhere, and all mm -hmm. that extra healing, all that extra armor is going to mean that the Druid will have to battle it out for like a minion battle. It's going to be more difficult than otherwise to just you know go face and try to finish the game off that way. So. Um, Really, Zelly just has to draw Ancient of Lords and stuff like that. I mean, I don't even know if we've seen one. So that might be a disaster if it's not in there. But uh, I'd, I, I, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I, I'd be willing to make a, a very strong bet that uh, Ancient of Lore is in that deck. Um, but, you know, more importantly, I think the Druid needs to just commandly seize the board before the dragons can take over. Uh, or even the dragon... Um, co-conspirators, right? Uh, because the backwing corruptor is very good as well with warrior. The, the big keys are like actually the four health minions, which seem to evade a lot of the removals. Mm -hmm. Well, there's your late game. I guess we'll never see it again. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see it soon. I'm sure as soon as you toss it away, it comes back the next turn. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Um... It's really hard to seize the early game if the warrior draws well, though. With, with the fiery war axe and uh, a few of the other removals, I think uh, the G2 warrior uh, has bashes and slams. So with all the, well, the health manipulation, your early game, you have to draw it, which is not that common for Druid. There isn't that much of it. But you also are at the mercy of, uh, of the warrior's answers, which can sometimes be merciless. Yeah, no doubt. Um, the warrior's answers can be so efficient and and super powerful if they can grab early tempo. Oh, and we also yeah we we've been seeing Jessica Trueheart. Another, it's not necessarily a win condition, but just like the longer the game goes, when Jessica has been played, the less likely Drew's going to be able to finish the game as well. So, um, yeah, it's it's one of those things too. That's another opportunity for Warrior to get a win without necessarily having to directly kill the opponent. Varian Rin, by the way, has been pretty underwhelming. I feel like even though it's got some cool stuff, yeah. a lot of the benefits from your deck outside of um, the Fierce Monkey is just the battle cries. The Justic, like four out of the the five cards that Varian could pull hypothetically in the hand right now would, would they would have like you know they'd be board presence, but they don't actually pull anything like a yeah, of value for like. It never really seems it never seems to work out uh, the way you want it to. The warrior still gets a head on the board uh, once again, though. And once again, we see the Earthen Ring Farseer dominate the early so game. Clutch. So <laughs> clutch. It's unbelievable, actually. It uh, is unbelievable. Like, how much this 3-3 heal for 3 is, is great. Almost to the point where, you know, I think people might even be reevaluating if they want to play Farseer now. Before standard even comes out, I mean, I mean, there's a there's a case for it for some of these things, you know. Yeah, there really is. Um, well, life coach is really thinking about it. 
the, the other option is maybe to Bran. Just go face and Bran. Um, it might yeah. let you play a, a super big Twilight Guardian next turn. Heal that. I mean, the Farseer has a lot of opportunities to get value throughout the game. It's just that I feel against the uh, Druids, um, if you can stop them at the start, it's going to be very difficult for them to actually make oh a recovery. Oh my god. Worst roll for Zelay, the Blood Imp. Uh, I don't know if that's too bad. Um, having a little bit of extra health on the mid-range minions uh, can be a pretty big deal. It's true, but at the same time, Warrior has Execute, um, so it's one of the classes that sometimes doesn't really depend on that. Not to mention that if it was the average 2-1 one, one, uh, one mana minion, it would have been able to get sniped by the Keep of the Grove, mm -hmm. and now you have no option to do so otherwise. So this was definitely an uncomfortable spot. I actually That's think the Blood Imp is okay, because it's, it's, it's always going to get value. Like... I don't think Warrior will ever kill that minion. I think the Blood Imp is eventually going to deal at least two damage with a Savage Roar. And he's going to he's gonna pump some health. I think he's going to do more than any like one, one, one drop would do. There's certainly a lot of those. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it, it does have opportunities to uh, be able to redeem itself, but that's just, that's just not... It's just not going to be impactful for a while. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, thankfully, we did draw a dragon in Life Coach's camp because oh, no. he didn't have a dragon, and Twilight Guardian is just a lot weaker if it's a 2 6 compared to a 3 6 taunt. So I'm definitely feeling the Twilight Guardian right now. Uh, and you don't lose any dragons synergy with the Blackwing Corruptor the following turn. It, it feels like there is what some merit know? to playing Brand Bronzebeard if you want to Blackwing Corruptor snipe whatever comes out for 5 mana. <laughs> Like um, also, we could, we could uh, do Bran and Varian, perhaps, someday. <laughs> Pull six cards from your deck. Yeah. That's so sick. I didn't think about that. Oh, my it's God. That's dream. hilarious. It's just like, you can't even fit that many. What happens if you pull minions and your board's too full? Where shall I start? Because you can Question. pull up the six minions, but Bran... The mm -hmm. Brandon variant is already two, so you can't you can put five max. Well, I haven't played that card enough. Yeah. Well, you mentioned it, man. Blood Imp being a little bit annoying here. Yeah, that one health helps a lot here. It literally it just took, just requires it, another three damage. <laughs> it, it it requires that another three damage. You're right, but at the same time, it, it hasn't had a proactive board impact, so mm -hmm. just kind of chilling. But you know, maybe you're right because Drew is definitely the beatdown in this uh, in this matchup, and therefore. Oh no, he's got four. He's got four. I missed. This oh, play. you're right. Oh, that good sick. observation. That's sick. Double charge, double plus one attack. Oh my god, great spot. Excellent play by Life Coach there. Yeah, it's just one of those things where again you're not really accustomed to thinking about the battle cry giving the plus attack. You just think about the charge effect. Oh, it's time. It's time. Force of nature, I believe. Kill the brand. Uh, sadly. Well, okay, if you don't do that, you can you can keep her in wild growth. But that puts you on eight next turn. You're still a little bit away. Brand is just yeah, so Force scary. of nature is, is good, but that also gives like a clean Justicar True Heart turn mm -hmm. for the warrior. And that might be the ticket for Life Coach to come back in. What? I do like the wild growth, though. It feels like the, the Druid just, just needs to put out more pressure over the next few turns. And I think the wild growth, even though the play is, is worse on turn six, I think it's going to lead to much better plays in the next uh, two or maybe three turns. I must safeguard. Okay, so he goes for the wild growth. Now that you see this, though, maybe you feel like you want to play Blackwing Corruptor for six and kill off the kill off this two five. Although conveniently, the stats on board. Mm, I like to draw two cards. I think. But then you or lose just... the dragons. Okay. I, I, okay. Oh no, you do lose the dragons. Okay. Yeah, I missed that. Mm. 
I mean, you might, you have a high chance of drawing into it by the time you play it again. You have three cards deeper in your deck to potentially yeah. get a dragon. So maybe by the time you can do that, you can get well, away with drawing cards. If you do play the Azure Drake, you get wrecked by Swipe. It's probably not worth it. Probably the, uh, the Corruptor is just the safest play. With the Corruptor, you have the high damage minion threatening, and you also have the brand, just the presence of that being a very big deal on the board of this deck. So I think the safer play is to do the, the Corruptor. Crip, we're four turns away from the Varian Ren brand Bronzebeard dream. I, that's just the only thing I want to see, and then this series has it all. It has the crazy comebacks, the next level mind games, the, yep. the wacky random effects with the spells and the Farian, and of course the unbelievable, unlikely wombo combos. Uh, that'd be so funny to me. Druid still stuck in a spot where you can't really remove, and I mean, it's also another thing that you have to be considering is that you're at 18 health and you're looking at 10 damage on board. You're not feeling the most safe. That Blood Imp is still just chilling there, not really doing anything. It's a, it's a Savage War target. That's what it is. Huh. How do we make this work? Let's see. If you lure, next turn you still have combo to to clear stuff. So you can use all those treants to kill into minions. Uh, and assuming that the lore trades into like something else you probably have six health too we have to keep that in mind right it doesn't just die oh. to the five yep. for no one. fantastic point so he plays this instead keeping the lore he might be using the lore defensively just to heal instead making it just like a worse guardian of kings i guess hmm I like the Drake here. Yeah, Azure Drake draws you two cards. You can develop Armor Smith and trade into the Savage Combatant, get a, an armor to 30 health, get two cards. Doesn't really help. I think the brand is more valuable than the damage. Well, I, I, I want to I wanna trade here with the 5 4, play the Armor Smith. Yeah. And then uh, go face. I think you could have represented lethal if you went face with everything, but it's just better to play a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. And now I think you do you you have to force a nature savage word to clear things. Maybe not. It's like the board's not as intimidating as you think it was. So you, maybe you can even like yeah, the draw the claw charge into the two four seems to work. It's just that hmm. not playing anything else with that feels like you're just going to have to combo next turn to, to catch up. Right. So I, I feel like the plays are either draw or combo clear, and combo clear next turn. Is there still an opportunity to lure? That's what I mean, lure, lure to draw. Oh, okay. Oops. Yeah, lure, lure to draw seems to give you an option. You still have cards you can pick up that would be really useful. Not that Not one. But <laughs> Azure Drake might be useful if he picks up another spell that can synergize with it. Meanwhile, Bran lives yet another turn. And, uh, looks like uh, he, uh, he's going to have a long life. I mean, uh, I don't think he's going down right now either. Yeah, you know, interesting dynamic too is that Shield Slam is uh, going to get buffed by one damage as well. So I'm, I'm trying to see if there's like an, a cool way to remove cleanly and play stuff, but it looks like it. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. And you want to keep Armor Smith alive too. The more armor you gain, the the higher chance for victory. I think you just need to use your weapon. Okay, use your weapon. Okay, Azure Drake as well. Slam for four. Dang. Oh, Bash for five. Wait, wait. Can you sh slam and then shield slam the the Ancient of Lord? Does, if you have zero... Oh, yeah, you can. Slam for four and then shield slam for two. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh, he's doing it. I think he's not sure about the interaction. Oh, wait, he doesn't have enough time to attack. 
Uh oh. Uh, attack's optional. Controlling the board is how you play the game. Oh, oh, he, he got did one miss three damage. Okay. He got the most important attack, which is the four. Mm -hmm. But he missed the three damage. Giving, uh, probably, I mean, now do you combo clear? Yeah, now you combo clear. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, it feels like that's the way. And you know what makes it feel really bad is not only are you losing your damage, but you're also mm -hmm. giving your opponent armor. Yeah, is it negotiable at all to, to leave the armor smith up? I think you just have to leave it up. The, the the brand has been so insane. Yeah. It wouldn't have drawn like those cards to remove that efficiently. Mm -hmm. He would be he would be drawing Emperor Thorzan next turn, basically. Or or, uh, or maybe just Bash. I feel like the Druid can win just the control game. It, because it has Harrison, it has the Azure Drake, it has some high quality minions, it has the the wild growth. I think this might be a game that goes to fatigue, honestly. It could be, but Druid already used one Force Nature, one Savage Roar, and if just a card Shuar comes down, there's a real chance that you need four, um, two Savage Roars to finish the game in one turn. Because now it's like you drop Emperor Thorsand or you drop just a card, and neither is really wrong here, and you're just in such a good spot. Well, that, that Blood Imp does end up taking out the Armor Smith. Yeah. Better late than never. <laughs> Doing something. What uh, I think I think uh, Emperor Thorson is okay, just because um, your your opponent used combo. You're you're feeling really safe, and then you have Varian Rin with the fiery war axe next turn. Yeah, you can even equip war axe now if you feel like really gung ho about it, which conveniently gives Druid um, Harrison Jones value. Yeah, I think he's thinking about that though. Like if he gets Harrison Jones, he just plays the other fiery war axe and kills him. Yeah, that's also a good point. Assuming that the Emperor Thorson survives. Mm -hmm. There's also the swipe with the Azure Drake available to Zelay, which, you know, we were talking about him being up at a 2-0 lead, and Life Coach is about to reverse sweep him if he can close out this game actually, here. I actually don't think there's any way that Life Coach does not kill Zelay. Well, he doesn't have a, a dragon for Blackwing Corruptor yet. Oh, so okay. He, so he still has only. So six if he damage. draws a dragon, if he draws right. a dragon, he doesn't. He doesn't have any way. Okay, so he disarms him first, and if he plays Druid of the Claw and in, in Taunt, uh, Dragon Claw would do it. Yet. Oh, nope. It's too off lethal. I think. Seven. I think we we can continue to take this a little bit slow. I don't think you need to really play Varian Rin here. You could probably get away playing just a car and Fire War Axe and Armor Smith. Plus, I like it's Varian. also 10 mana. I mean, the Druid's at 7 and <laughs> you have 6 damage in hand. So, Varian is just so good. It's true, but it's also like a reload of draws. Um, you can spend, you can play your entire hand and like Varian Rin to redraw. Like a super ancient of lore. I think Varian's a no-brainer. I think Varian Warax killed a 4-6. You're threatening 6 damage. Any minion that stays alive, you win the game with next turn. But what if he doesn't have... Uh, what, what if he just, like, big game hunters? And then, like, plays another taunt. Oh, he, okay, he goes a halfway play. doesn't play Varian, plays just a card, but... Uh, so th this way he doesn't die to like a big game hunter. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy about this play as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Good old life coach. Finding what is probably the best play. Savage Roar number two doesn't save Zelay here. And I think he's just going through all the motions. Really kind of processing and uh, taking a deep sigh. Realizing that this series, despite having one of the most cool and well-played games that I've seen all year long uh, is not going to tilt in his favor for the series. He's not going to win uh, this best of five. Or am I, am I calling it too early, Crip? Um, I think you can uh, wild growth into a Ancient of War and stay alive. Ancient of Lore! 
Does that keep him alive? No, it doesn't. I think that's game. Time waits for no one. One more check. Uh, you can swipe keeper. Uh, no, nope. you still die to the fiery war axe. There's no Azure Drake draw that can save you. No, that's nope. just gonna be it. Hero power into oh, just a car, and one of the most entertaining series that you'll see in wow. 2016 has come to a close. Full reverse sweep from Life Coach. There we have Long it. Long series too, man. That one went <laughs> distance. A couple hours. Yeah. Couple All of right. hours indeed. We started that at like twelve. <laughs> it's now two thirty PM. Yeah. But uh, you know, game five with Life Coach with some crazy back and forth, the shamans, the Nefarians. Uh and finally the Omo Omo we were one turn away from Brand Bronzebeard and uh the Varian. The dream. The six yeah. the six card variant. Draw six. Put a Not divine quite. favor and instantly play it. But there is still hope. All the uh, G2 team members seem to have this deck, so that combo is uh, at any time going to be an option, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I'm actually very surprised. Um, I think Zele is uh, maybe the first player to whiff three times with Druid, actually. Uh, yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty brutal because Druid is one of the more consistent decks, and it has definitely failed him. I don't. I didn't really see too many noticeable errors. Uh, at, at all, really, from mm -hmm. Soleil's lines of play. Um, I definitely think Life Coach made the best of his hands. So, you know, the, the cool play, of course, being the uh, Brand Bronze Beard, the synergies that he's able to line up with it. Um, the, the way he set it up, so that way, foundationally, going forward, he would be very good position. Good stuff. And finally, Dragon Warrior gets some vin vindication, right? A, a little of, bit. We, we a were, little bit. A lot of people, I don't know who, were, were hating on the deck, uh, saying that you know, it may not be that strong, and you know, I, I'm a little bit part of that as well. Uh, yeah. But some of these people said that it was one of the strongest decks they practiced. Uh, Eloise was saying that it was the deck that she had the most confidence in, and it mm -hmm. went in zero six. So, <laughs> could be one of those things where maybe it's the combination of deck lists uh, that G two has figured out once again, showing why they are to be considered by many the top team in Hearthstone, at least as a collective group. All right, guys. Well, coming up, we still have uh, half a day left, believe it or not. Um, we have uh, the, the winners. We're playing against each other. I think we're going to kick it off with the first two winners. It will be RDU versus Saviz. 